Revelation chapter 14, there was given to us a message for a dying world, the three angels' messages that the world needs in these last days. The disciples were given a commission. We find that in uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. We also find that in Matthew chapter 28 and verses 19 and 20. We also find that in the book of Mark, the last chapter there, the commission was given to them. But there was a movement that God had raised in these last days, in the middle of the 1800. And the gospel commission that was given to them was similar to the one that was given to the disciples, but with more detail for this time, which what we will call present truth. And in Revelation chapter 14, just one verse there, the three angels' messages we're looking at, but we're looking at the last verse there that is found in uh, verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. It says, very familiar passage again, here is what? Here is the patience of the saints. And then what else? Here are they that men of God and the, and the faith of Jesus. So the, God, the Bible says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that, that do what? That keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. What is the faith of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters? How would you describe the faith of Jesus Christ there? How would you describe the faith of Jesus Christ? Here is the patience of the saints. That's the, that's the first clue there. Here are they that do what? Keep the, Keep the commandments of God. Then what else? They have the faith of Jesus Christ. So the Bible there, in that verse that gives us two clues. The saints have patience and they also keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. And then what? The faith of Jesus. What is the faith of Jesus? One of the books that I can take you, I heard that. The testimony of Jesus Christ. What else? The sp I heard Spirit of Prophecy. What else? How, turn with me now to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. If we were to use one of the stories in the Bible, one of the best stories in the Bible to describe this, the faith of Jesus Christ, it says the saints will need patience, my brothers and sisters. Was Jesus patient? Yes. He was very, very patient. He was a very humble man. He put up with uh, the hypocrisy, the apostasy of, of His people. Even when He came, as we are about to read in Revelation chapter 14, even when He came, He presented Himself to them. And they should have known better. But they rejected Him. As uh, Isaiah chapter 53 tells us. But notice with me now in Philippians chapter 3. Paul now is one of the perfect examples we can use here to describe the faith of Jesus Christ. Notice with me now, Paul, as many of you know, he was a what? A Pharisee. He persecuted God's people. Amen? He persecuted the church. He was very zealous for the, the Jewish faith that he wanted to uphold. And that's why he persecuted these folks. But he did it uh, out of ignorance. A amen? A lot of us sometimes, we do things out of ignorance. Notice with me now in Philippians chapter 3. After Paul described who he was before he met Christ, and uh, how he was a Pharisee, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, and then he says, verse 7, But what things were gained to me? Those I counted, what's the word? Loss. So what is the faith of Jesus Christ? What is the faith of Jesus Christ? The saints will need patience. Notice again now, Paul says, But what things were gained to me? Those I counted them. So what is the faith of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters? What is the faith? The saints will need patience. The saint will need endurance. We're going to have to go through some tough time. Because remember in the context that Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 describes the patience of the saints here. This was after verses 9 through 11 describe those who will receive the mark of, to of the beast and also during that time of trouble, the persecution that will come upon God's people. 
as Daniel chapter 12, uh, 1 described it, there will be a time of trouble like we've never seen before. But notice now, going back to the account of Paul here, verse 7 again in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, Paul says, those I counted them what? Lost for who? That is describing the saints in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Verse 8, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things. How many things? All things but lost. For what? For the excellency of the what? For what? He counted all things lost. For what? Because Paul wanted to know Christ for himself. Notice, and then he says, Of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them, but what, what? What's another word for dung? Waste. Waste. Nothing. Then it says, that I may do what? Win Christ. That's the patience of the saints, my brothers and sisters. That is the patience of the saints. We remember the account when Paul, who was Saul, when he met Christ, what did Christ do to him? He knocked him, what? Knocked him off his horse. Notice verse 9. And be found in him, not having what? My own righteousness, the faith of Jesus Christ. The righteousness by faith in the Son of God. Not having what? My own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the, th through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by what? By faith. Then notice verse 10. That what? That I may know Him and the power of what? Of His resurrection and the fellowship of what? Of His uh, sufferings being made conformable unto His death. Verse 10 there summarizes everything that Paul is trying to tell us here about this Christ that he, he came to know. About this Christ that he fell in love with. About the same Christ that the saints going to need patience to follow in these last days. And that's you and I, my brothers and sisters. That's you and I. And our attitude should be like Paul's attitude here, that he wanted to know Christ for himself to the point that he was willing to forsake all, to lose all for the sake of Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 10 again. That I may what? Know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of what? His uh, suffering. Christ, Paul wasn't looking for to serve a glorified Christ here. He wanted to follow Christ in his suffering. The suffering Christ first before he could enjoy the glorification. And then he says, being made conformable, what? Unto what? Yes. Unto his death. God had raised a movement in the midst of 1800. It was a movement to prepare the world for judgment and also to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Go with me now, if you will, to the book of Matthew. Pause there. Revelation chapter 12, rather. Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, we read about two churches. This is what has been called the Great Controversy chapter. Revelation chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in where? In heaven, a woman clothed with what? With the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. We looked at this before. The woman there represent a church, but more specifically, speaking of the Old Testament church and who was about to give birth to the Son of Man, to the Son of God. Then it says it's standing on the moon, which is the foundation, the pillars of our foundation. But notice verse uh, Two, and she being with what? Child, cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. Then it says in verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Notice it says, it's another wonder in heaven. And behold, a, a what? A great red dragon, having how many heads? Seven heads and uh, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Where have we seen a description like this before, my brothers and sisters? A red 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 dragon, having how many heads again? Seven heads. And where did we see something like this before? Daniel chapter 7. And who is this referring to, my brothers and sisters? 
And also we saw that in Revelation chapter 17, the woman that, right, that is riding the beast, the beast with uh, seven heads. Remember that? We studied that a couple of Sabbaths ago. And who is this power being described here? That is the, that is the papal power. But notice now, this woman now, having, this beast now, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Notice how it describes it in verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Who is that describing? That's Lucifer. So that's not referring to the papacy. No. Then what does that tell you and I? Then who's behind the papacy? Who's behind that power? Yes. Amen. That's, the, that's Satan. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, before the church, to do what? Which was ready to be delivered for to devour her, her child as soon as it was born. That's the, referring to the baby Jesus. Amen? And who was the dragon there? In the second, secondary sense. Of course, in the first, second, the, the first part of that, the first application to that, referring to the, the devil, Satan. Amen? But in the secondary sense, who is that? Roman That's the Roman power. So the Bible is taking us back and forth here between the pagan Rome and also between and going, uh, going to Papal, papal Rome. We're going back and forth between, in this chapter here, between those two institutions, which is really the same institution, but as the Bible describes it in the book of Daniel chapter 7, it was different, that little horn that, that, that spoke blasphemous words against God. It was different from the other power. Why? Because it was a combination now of church and and state. So bear with me here. Verse 5 now. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was cut up unto God and to his uh, throne. So when did uh, this dragon or pagan Rome try to kill baby Jesus there, my brothers and sisters? When Herod sent his uh, soldiers after the, 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 to kill the baby. From zero to two years. Oh, we looked at this before. This is just a little review here. We are looking at this great controversy that is playing all around us. And we are right in the middle of this great controversy. Satan has his uh, movement that he's making now through the papacy. Using the papacy to evangelize the world. But God has raised a movement in the midst of 1800s to give the last warning to the world. And in Revelation chapter 12, we see the early part of the church. And we also see the remnant of that church that is going to finish the work that the early church started. And we are right in the midst of this great controversy. Amen. Notice what it says here in verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, this is referring to the period of time which is called the Dark Ages. 538 A.D. all the way to 1798 when papacy now ruled the world. Now you see how the Bible now is uh, taking us now to papacy, from pagan Rome to the papacy. Because this is going to be the last power that was going to rule the world until Jesus comes again. And the woman fled into the wilderness, verse 6 says, where she have a place prepared for, of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore year, days. That's the period of time there. Now, skip over with me now. Or oh, we're going all the way down. We know the dragon is Satan, that old serpent called the devil, but using an earthly power to persecute God's people. But the woman, it says here, fled where? Into the wilderness you have what was called an invisible church and a visible church which one was the visible church it was the roman power the papacy was the visible church but god's true church was in obscurity that's the wilderness there was in obscurity was was not visible but that was the true church my brothers and sisters that was the church that was doing the work in obscurity but it could not be seen Likewise today, the papacy is evangelizing the world through all of, of these uh, laws, through all of these outreach 
that is doing to head of states, even to religious leaders. There is a movement going on right now where the papacy is trying to evangelize the world, reaching out to the young people more specifically. And my brothers and sisters, he's preparing the world for exactly for what we are reading here, for persecutions once again. But God needs a people in these last days. That's going to do the work in obscurity. But right now, we have a window of opportunity. We don't need to wait for persecution to come. We have a window of opportunity that we need to rise up and uh, have an outreach for God. Just like the disciples did before persecution came upon them. They reached the world in one day. The Bible tells us 3,000 were baptized. Skip on down now to verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of what? Of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That's the Satan now. Then it says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice he heavens and he that dwell in them. But notice now, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of what? And of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows what? My brothers and sisters, as we see the development taking place in our world today, as we see Bible prophecy being fulfilled from left to right, is there a better application of this passage here than today? Woe unto what? The inhabitants of the earth for the devil has come down unto you because he knows what he has what? He has a very short time. And how much time do we have to finish this work then? We have a very short time, my brothers and sisters. We have a very short time. Look on this, your screen there. You of Jubilee. It says, merciful like the Father, pontifical counsel uh, for the what? For the promotion of the what? Of the new evangelization. So the papacy has plans now, especially with this year of Jubilee, to evangelize the world. But whom did God give, uh, my brothers and sisters, a mission to tell the world about the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we just read about, that Paul fell in love with here. And also to give the world the warning about the men of sin. Whom did God give this message to? It's none other than the Seventh-day Adventists. Notice what it says here. In the very time in which we live. What time? The very time in which we live. The Lord has called His what? His people. And has given them a message to bear. What message is that? He has called them to do what? To expose the wickedness of the men of sin. And where, which message that God has given us to help us to expose the wickedness of the men of sin? The three angels' messages. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 12. So God has given us, my brothers and sisters, in these last days, we have a short time. He has given us a message to give to the world. And part of the message is to expose the wickedness of the men of sin. My brothers and sisters, do you know what the Pope is doing right now when it comes to this year of Jubilee? If I were to show you the logo that they use for this year of Jubilee, you'll see the, the, how the world now is being deceived. The world is being deceived. So my brothers and sisters, we, we are sitting on gold. What do I mean by that? You and I, my brothers and sisters, we are, I heard somebody say it. The Word of God. We are sitting on gold and also the spirit of prophecy. We have knowledge available to us that many other people do not have. Amen. And the world is dying for, for it, my brothers and sisters. Millions now are flocking to Rome and other parts of the world, going through those so-called holy doors, thinking that they will find mercy. And many of them are very sincere, my brothers and sisters. Many of them are very sincere. And they need this message more than ever. Notice the logo that the Pope used there in, for the so-called year of Jubilee. And it's, he's calling everybody for a new world order, for a new world religion, a new world education. 
Notice this logo here. You have Jesus here. It's supposed to be Jesus carrying this man over his shoulder. But what do you see? Their eyes met together. But what does it mean to have that, that one eye there in the middle of that? Notice what it says here. It says from Mystic Americanism, 1924, Grace Mori. It says the all-seeing eye, emblematic of the pineal gland, altered eye of the human being, has been found amid the ruins of every civilization upon the globe. Thereby do what? Attesting the fact of a universal what? What's one word for this? Ecumenism. That's the call of a universal religion over all the earth at some remote period. As we now restore this what? This universal religion. So what time is it, my brothers and sisters? Now, the Pope, Satan knows that he has but a short time, the Bible tells us. And the papacy, he even said that himself. The papacy recently said, he has a short time. And he is a Pope in a hurry. Gonna see that in a moment. Then it says, as we now restore this universal religion, we set the all what? Seeing eye upon the pyramid. So as you can see there, it wasn't by accident they made a logo like that. The message that they're sending across, my brothers and sisters, is time. Why do you think all of these events are taking place at the same time? We have now a global law now, so-called climate change. And we are told that as a result of enforcing laws like this, that's going to lead to the mark of the beast. And Satan knows, my brothers and sisters, that he has but a short time. And the papacy understand that now is the time. And having a logo like that is sending a signal for, to those who understand the message that it is time, my brothers and sisters. It is time within this year of Jubilee to walk through those holy doors. It's time to have a global religion. Notice what this says here. December 16, 2015, Western Journalism. It says, Neighborhood finds chilling letter about what? Islam in mailboxes. What the note said had police, what? Come running. running. Notice now, it says, Sweden, welcome what? Syrian refugees. Who's been calling for all of the nations, my brothers and sisters, to welcome those refugees? Who's been calling for this? And is United States of America about to bring in over tens of thousands of those Syrians? But notice what this says here. Sweden welcomes Syrians refugees with open arms. Sweden's government and people walled out the welcome map for refugees by bringing in over 200,000 Syrians, many of whom settle in uh, Stockholm. Then it says, the humanitarian act of the generosity and virtue has now been met with what? With messages of hate and what? Intolerance. And if true, those very refugees are threatening to kill Swedish citizens for what reason? If they refuse to convert to... My brothers and sisters, we are living in these last days. Satan knows that he has but a short time. And the papacy had put all of these things in place. And they are about to bring tens of thousands of these so-called refugees here to United States of America. Who is behind Islam, my brothers and sisters? It's, it's the Pope. Everything has to be in order. The stage has to be set before persecution begins. And now these nations that have embraced these refugees are facing persecution, chaos, all over the place. But it, my brothers and sisters, it is part of the plan to persecute God's people. Those who are preaching the three angels' message, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteousness by faith in the Son of God only, the only true God that you and I need to serve in these last days. They are making it illegal in, this la in these last days to worship God according to the dictate of your heart. My brothers and sisters, the papacy is making rapid move, as the Bible tells us. Go back with me now to Revelation chapter 12. It says here, 
Verse 13 now. And when the dragon, the dragon knows that he has but a short time. Remember that? Remember that? And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he, what did he do? He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. This is referring to when Jesus died on the cross, when the great controversy was really unveiled to the unfallen world, when they see the true characteristics of Satan and the true characteristics of Jesus Christ. Amen? The true characteristics, the love of God for the unfallen world and fallen humanity. Then the unfallen world made a decision. They're going to stick on the side of Jesus. And then now, the Bible tells us that. And spirit of prophecy tells us that. Satan no longer had access to the unfallen world anymore. Rejoice ye heaven. But woe unto us, my brothers and sisters. Woe unto us who live upon this earth. Why? Because Satan access to the heavenly realm has been cut off. That means... At the cross, when the access was cut off, the enemy knew he had but a short time. But my brothers and sisters, that was 2,000 years ago this happened. The cross took place 2,000 years ago. But my, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, there were many things that needed to take place first that would indicate the end of Satan. And we, as Bible students, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have seen all of these things. We have witnessed many of them. They are being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Right now, as we speak, my brothers and sisters. Right now, they are being fulfilled. So my brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility. When Jesus says to the disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, This gospel shall be preached in all the world. Then the end shall come. When Jesus says this gospel, was, was it something that he was pointing at? What, then what, what did he use the word this? What was, what was the this gospel? He was referring to himself. He lived the life. My brothers and sisters, you and I need a character transformation in these last days. Amen. Amen? Amen. He lived the life. He was the gospel. And notice now, when he gave them the commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, what did he say? Go into all the world and take the gospel to them. So notice now, Matthew 24 says he was the gospel. That needs to go into the world. But then in Matthew 28, he sent them to the world to take the gospel. So now, my brothers and sisters, we become the gospel. Our lives become the gospel. My life become the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here is the patience of the... Here are they that do what? Keep the commandments of God. And what? Whose faith do they have? The faith of Jesus Christ. The characteristics of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. That transforms life. But today they are making this illegal, my brothers and sisters. Notice with me again in verse... 13, and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man, the man child because that woman reflected the man child, the characteristics of the Son of God. Then it says, verse 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is what? Nourished for that same period of time again, 538 A.D. all the way to 1798. But notice verse 15 now. And the serpent cast out of his mouth. What? Water as a... What does water represent again? People. Nations. Languages. Then it says again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth. Water as a flood. After the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Notice now, and the earth, we looked at this before, the earth represents who? United States here of America. Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 tells us that there was the second beast that came out of the earth. And we know that the second beast is United States of America. And so it says, and the earth helped the woman. The earth helped the, the woman who was being persecuted by the dragon, by the papacy. 
And where is Rome, my brothers and sisters? It's in Europe, amen? The papacy seat is in Europe, right? But it says, the earth helped the woman. This is referring to the pilgrims that came to the shore to flee persecution. They came to the shore of United States of America. And this is why we, uh, our constitution, should I say, used to say? Yeah. Used to say that we have what? It's based on freedom of conscience. We are a nation without a king and a nation without a, a pope. Because why? Because that they fled the kings and the popes in Europe. But my brothers and sisters, Revelation chapter 13 tells us that United States of America will speak as a dragon. Notice, going back again, then it says here in verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with who? With the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And here is the characteristics again, just like we saw in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, which keep the commandments of God and have what? The testimony of Jesus Christ. So the dragon did what? Went after the remnant of the original church, the first church, the church of, of the apostles, and, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. My brothers and sisters, who are the remnant of the seed here referring to? Remember, the context is that the Bible tells us that the dragon, Satan, knows that he has but a short time. He has a short time. And then it says, he's going to make war with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Did, the saints, did Satan make war with God's people during the dark ages, my brothers and sisters? Did he make war with God's people during the, the time, the era of the early church? D did the saints in the dark ages, more specifically now, the world and saints, did they reflect the characteristics of Jesus Christ, just like the first church did? Then the last day church, the remnant of the seed, will reflect the same characteristics of the church, of the early church. Then if that church truly reflect the characteristics of Jesus Christ, the way the first church did it, the way the Waldensians did it, what must we expect in these last days? Persecution. We are told the reason why we, the church is at ease. We haven't seen any persecution. is because we are not following the teaching of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God raised a movement. Not that we should be looking forward now for persecution, but my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that those who live what? Godly in Christ Jesus, what will happen to them? Shall face persecution. So it is inevitable, especially in these last days, when Satan, the enemy, knows that he has but a short time. The papacy is speaking as a dragon. He is speaking for, the, for Rome. Like 2 Thessalonians tells us, that he comes to speak for, he represents. Somebody. And God has His representative. This is the great controversy being played in front of us, my brothers and sisters. Satan has his representative on earth. But God has a remnant in these last days. We are outnumbered. But the Bible also reassured us that those who are what? With us are what? Are greater than those who are, who are against us. Notice what this article says here. It says, Pope Francis approves Mother Teresa for what? Saint. For St. Hood. It says, Francis took the step by signing a what? A decree declaring that the in, in a what? inexplicable 2008 recovery of a Brazilian man who suddenly woke from a coma caused by a viral brain infection was due to the intercession of of the what? Albanian nun who died at age 87 in 1997. Is the world and seeing the papacy as a god, my brothers and sisters? But, but notice, this is all over the news. How could a man, my brothers and sisters, declare somebody a saint? Be based on miracle, so-called somebody who, who has died? They, they attributed that miracle 
that something that she had did, in this case, Mother Teresa, isn't that blasphemy, my brothers and sisters? Isn't that a deception? But the whole world believes this, my brothers and sisters. But do are we sitting on gold, my brothers and sisters? As Seventh-day Adventists, are we sitting on gold? What was it again? Spirit of Prophecy told us that God has raised this movement to show who the man of sin is. Amen. To, so, to show the world the deception. But this is all over the news. But the world have embraced this. The world think that the Pope has the power to do, to do this. But notice it says, he approves it. He approves her as a sainthood. But again, what did Revelation chapter 14 say again? Verse 12. Here is the patient of who? The saints. Are, are, is, it, is it talking about dead saints? No. no. The Bible says we are the saints. Those who reflect. These are the saints. Those who reflect the characteristics of Christ, the Son of God. Amen? Notice what this says here. In Review and Herald, June 18, 1889, it says, God's commandment keeping people are described by the, what? By the prophet as men wondered at. Then it says, we are to be a people how? Distinct from the world. The eyes of the world are upon us and we are what? Observed by many of whom we have what? My brothers and sisters, the world is observing us, my brothers and sisters. Because you know what? There are some in the world who know that we are sitting on gold. Amen? They know that. But they just need some more clarification. They are watching us. Then it says, There are those who know something of the doctrines we claim to believe. And they are noting the effect of our faith upon our characters. They are waiting to do what? To see what kind of influence we exert and how we carry ourselves before a what? A faithless world. The angels of heaven are looking upon who? Angels are looking upon us. The remnant of the seed of the woman. Angels are looking upon us, are waiting for us, my brothers and sisters. Spirit of Prophecy says, God is waiting with what? longing desire for the manifestation of himself upon his people. Then when we get our act together, then God will empower us, we are told, to finish the work. Because there's a very short time to do this work. But my brothers and sisters, if you want pick up the banner, want, want surrender your lives as we just read, from the writing of Paul to the Lord Jesus Christ. God will raise somebody else. God will raise somebody else. Because it is God's desire to reunite with, with us once again. To, to reunite with us. To recreate things the way He had planned on doing them, my brothers and sisters. Don't you long for heaven to be with your Savior? But notice again. It says, they are waiting. The world is waiting for us, my brothers and sisters. They are waiting to see what kind of influence we exert and how we carry ourselves before a faithless world. The angels of heaven are looking upon us. We are made what? Expectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. My brothers and sisters, who is going to tell the world that they are being deceived by this so-called year of jubilee, by so the so-called climate change. Who's going to tell the world? Because many Protestants, many faithful Protestants, many Christians, including non-Christians, who have a passion for godliness, for righteousness, don't know the things that we know. They don't know that they are being deceived by this climate change thing, my brothers and sisters. But do we, did God give us spiritual eyesight and plenty of information to let the world know that they are being deceived? Yes. Should we keep that to ourselves? Do you know what just took place recently? Last Sabbath we were here the, as the world came together and signed on this what? This pact. What was it again? On climate change, where the over 195 nations gave their power and, and their influence and all their freedom to the papacy. 
Now the papacy, my brothers and sisters, is controlling the world. Satan knows that he has but a short time. Notice what this article says. From Cruz, it says, December 12, 2015, Pope Francis praises what? Historic Paris Climate Change Agreement. Pope Francis praised what he called a what? An historic agreement, which at a United Nation Climate Change Summit in Paris and called for what? A global commitment to implement it. So who is the world looking for now? To getting their orders, to take orders from. So not only he called for this, now he's calling them to enforce it. Then it says, including special attention to the what? To the poorest na uh, populations. Then it says, same article goes on to say, Pope Francis has made the fight against climate change one of the cornerstones, notice now, of his what? One of his cornerstones of his papacy. Then it says, last June, he released an encyclical called Laudato Si that reflected on the need to protect our common home and stop what? Global warming. What is behind global warming? This call for global warming? National Sunday Law, my brothers and sisters. It's the National Sunday Law that is behind the whole thing. The Pope did not hide this in point 234 in his document, Laudato Si. He did not hide this. Then it says here, the Pope's role had been transformative in what? Mobilizing religious support. He's evangelizing the whole world right now. Then it says, for stronger environmental protection. My brothers and sisters, go back with me now to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation, which book we're going to? Back to the, the third angel's message. The three angel's message. Notice what time it is. The Bible says that Satan knows that he has but a... But notice how the Bible put, puts it. The second angel's message here. The Bible is also telling you and I, my brothers and sisters, as followers of Jesus Christ, and also telling the world what time it is. It says, verse 8, And there followed another angel, saying what? Babylon is what? Fallen is what? Fallen. That great city, because she made what? All nations drink of the wrath of what? Of her fornication. My brothers and sisters, what just took place a week ago? Wouldn't you say that the whole world have been made drunk? Wouldn't you say that? So what time it is? Babylon is what? Fallen and fallen, my brothers and sisters. Who did God give that message to, to give to the world? The remnant of, of the seed of the woman. Are we the remnant of the seed of the, of the woman? So what time it is? It's time to give the message. But it's not just a message, my brothers and sisters. It's time for you and I to live the life. Amen? It's time to live the life. It's time for... So, because... Sister White says, the world is watching us. Are they watching the message that we're preaching? Or are they watching the, the way we live our lives? The world is watching us, my brothers and sisters. It's a very short time that we have a very short time, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's time to, 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 to stop wasting your energy in, in things that would not prepare you for, for glory. It's time that we should stop our energy from watching movies, and all of these things, they are, when we sit in front of the television and watching all of these things, by the way, I just did a video on this, I uh, just posted it online, if you'd like to uh, watch that, go to, uh, go to uh, the YouTube account of the ministry and you'll, you'll find it there. My brothers and sisters, the world is trying to reach out to our young people, and one of the ways they are doing this, even adults as well. It's through the media, television, and all of these things. And we are becoming spiritually dumb, my brothers and sisters. We will not grow in, in grace. We will not grow spiritually if, we, if we're sitting in front of these uh, objects that we were told by Antoine LaVey, this guy who was a uh, Luciferian. He says the reason why TV was invented. You may fool yourself thinking that, my brothers and sisters, that you only watch the good thing. I, I uh, fooled myself that way two years ago. And it sucked me in into other things that were not so good for me. My brothers and sisters, we, we are living in these last days. The world is watching. Satan knows that he has but a short time. And the Bible says Babylon is 
fallen and fallen. As we see these events taking place, they, it means that Babylon is fallen, is fallen. It's not, we can't wait to see some horrible thing to happen to the papacy for to apply this passage here that Babylon is fallen in fallen is when we see the whole world the Bible says in being made drunk Amen. that's what it says here let's look at it again let's look at the context of it again it says and there followed another angel saying Babylon is what is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all nation drink of the wine of her fornication through her policies and the world the whole world is being made drunk right now so that means what Babylon is fallen amen Babylon is fallen because the world now is taking their orders from Babylon from the papacy notice what this says here on the screen in great controversy page 616 and 600, 615 and 616. It says, those who honor the Lord, the law of God, have been accused of bringing what? Judgment upon the world. And then it says here, and they will be what? Regarded as what? As the cause of what? As the cause the f of the fearful convulsions of nature and the strife and bloodshed among men that are filling the earth with fraud. They just passed a global law, climate change law. What is going to happen next, my brothers and sisters? Is that going to stop natural disaster? Yes or no? No. no it's not going to. As a matter of fact, what would happen? It's going to get worse, even worse. So spirit of prophecy is telling us what? What time are we living here, my brothers and sisters? She says, these things will, be, will get worse and worse. And they will be, God's people, will be regarded as the cause of what? Of the fearful convulsions of nature and the strife and bloodshed. Among who? Among men that are filling the earth with woe. The power attending the last warning has enraged the wicked. Their anger is kindled against all who have what? Receive the message. And Satan will excite what? The still greater intensity, the spirit of hatred and what? What did we just read in Revelation chapter, four, uh, chapter 12, rather, verse 17? And, uh, and what? And the dragon was what? Rough with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which uh, keep the commandments of God. And the testimonies now of Jesus Christ. And what, what did we just read here? That Satan will kindle a fire against God's people. All who have received the message. And Satan will e excite to still greater intensity. So what must we expect in this last day? We should expect natural disaster to get worse. And as natural disaster get worse, then we should expect persecution against God's people to get worse. It will be worldwide, my brothers and sisters. Worldwide. And we are already seeing this. They're making it now, illegal now, even to quote certain, certain passages from the Bible. Notice what it says here. It says, it says, quoting conservative post, December 9th, 2015, quoting Bible illegal web in Cincinnati starting this uh, Wednesday. This is why. It says, a $200 a day fine on a therapist or a counselor practicing the therapy that aims to change what? Lesbian, gay men, bisexual, or transgender people from their sexual orientation or gender identity. Then it says, threatening them to fine them of $73,000 per year to a counselor that uses what? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 to help those caught in sin. You know what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11 say? Let's turn there. 1 Corinthians, we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses uh, 9 through 11. My brothers and sisters, Satan knows he has but a short time. And the remnant of the seed of the woman will reflect the characteristics of Jesus Christ. 
They will uphold the Bible and the Bible only. And the enemy knows that. And so he's uh, inspiring the head of states, even uh, religious leaders, to make it illegal now to even quote Bible passages. Notice now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit what? The kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither what? Fornicators. That, what is it again? No what? Idolaters. What else? No adulterers, no effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind. We don't need to go into the, the, the graphic description here of what all of these uh, names mean here. We have young people among us. Amen? Amen? Some of you adults here know exactly what this is referring to. Then it says, verse 10, No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were what? Notice now. And such were what? Some of you. But ye are what? Wash. But ye are sanctified by... But ye are what? Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. So if you present this message, if you try to counsel someone who are living in this kind of lifestyle, or a, a drunkard, as the Bible says, or thieves, if you try to, to show them the hope that they have in Jesus Christ, this is illegal now at least in Cincinnati, Cincinnati now. My brothers and sisters, this is not going to be something over there in Ohio. It's going to spread all over the place. How much time do we have, my brothers and sisters? Satan knows he has how much, but a short time. And what message was given to the remnant? Revelation chapter 14, verse 8 again. Babylon is fallen, is fallen Why? Because she has made all nations drink of the wine of her what? Fornication. What does wine represent in the Bible? Doctrines, teachings. And uh, the whole world has been indoctrinated, my brothers and sisters. But the, just like there was a group of people during the dark ages who discovered the word of God, the righteousness by faith in the Son of God. Men like Martin Luther, for example. And they knew what they were facing just by sharing the Word of God with, with the people. They knew it would cause them, it could cause them their life. And it did cause them their life. But they were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice what the Bible says, uh, Spirit of Prophecy says here, right? The Great Controversy, page 572. Every moment, speaking of Martin Luther, every moment that could be spared from his daily duties, he employed in steady robbing himself of sleep and grudging even the time spent at his scanty meals. Above everything, notice now, above everything else, he delighted in what? In the study of God's Word. And then, and then what happened next? He had found what? A Bible. Where did he find a Bible? Chain, Chain to the convent wall. And to this he often repaid. So what did the, this article is telling us? That the Bible is being chained up again, my brothers and sisters. We are going back to the wilderness. When you have, when you have two churches, like we just read in the Great Controversy chapter, Revelation chapter 12. Two churches, my brothers and sisters. Two churches in these last days. One was the invisible church. The other one was the visible church. The one that, that is the visible church in these last days, it's the one the majority now is following. And the invisible church will have to carry this message just like the Waldensians and the, and the Reformers did. Notice also what Wycliffe did, my brothers and sisters, when he discovered the Word of God for himself, the righteousness by faith in the Son of God for himself. Wycliffe, it says, he lived to place in the hands of his countrymen the most, notice now, the most powerful of all weapons against who? Rome. Against Rome. Which Rome? The papacy. Against Rome. To give them the Bible. And then it says, The heaven appointed agent, notice now, to liberate, enlighten, and evangelize the, the people. My brothers and sisters. What do we need to do in these last days? We need to have an aggressive evangelistic outreach. To liberate the people. 
from the deception. The papacy is in a hurry, my brothers and sisters. He knows prophecies. He knows it. Satan knows that he has but a short time. Then it says here, to give them the Bible, the heaven appointed agent to liberate, enlighten, and evangelize the people. He had placed in the hands of the English people a light which should what? Never be extinguished in spite of persecution. Then it says, in giving them the Bible to his countrymen, he had done what, notice now, done more to break the fetters of ignorance and vice, more to liberate and elevate his country than was ever achieved by the most brilliant victories on fields of what? Battle. On, on battle. We have the most efficient weapon, my brothers and sisters, at our disposal. We are sitting on gold, amen? amen? We are sitting on gold, and the world is dying for this. Which group, my brothers and sisters, that the Pope keeps mention, mentioning in almost everything that he, he, try, he says? No, the poor, the poor, it's the poor. What, which two classes did we have during the Dark Ages? Two classes, the rich and the poor. Which one of them was hungry the most? For the word of God. The poor. My brothers and sisters, have they created crisis in these last days so that we can have two classes again? So my brothers and sisters, there's a lot of poor right now who, in, in our world today who are, who are hungry, who are waiting for people like Martin Luther, like Wycliffe here to liberate their souls, to enlighten their minds and to evangelize them, to show them that Babylon is, is indeed is fallen in these last days. But there is a way out. Revelation chapter 18 says, God is calling the people, he, a people out of Babylon into what? Into the loving arms of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, 12, again, here is the patience, patience of the saints. Here are that keep what? And the, again, going back now, the Bible tells us that Satan knows that he has but a short time. Does the papacy understand the Bible, my brothers and sisters? Notice what this says here. Apocalyptic beliefs may explain why Francis is a pope what? what? What did he say? Apocalyptic belief. So does he know the Bible, my brothers and sisters? So may explain why he is a pope uh, in a hurry. Satan knows that he has but a short time. And Babylon is what? Fallen and fallen. God is telling His people, look at what's happening in the world today. The nations are being made drunk by the wine of the papacy. It's time to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. To prepare the world for what's coming, my brothers. To prepare the world to receive the Son of God when He comes in the clouds of glory. My brothers and sisters, the papacy has lunch his year of jubilee. And it's a global outreach, my brothers and sisters. It's a global outreach. That has never been done before. Where during a year of jubilee, that the pilgrims don't have to make the pilgrimage to Rome. They have doors of mercy all over the world. It's a global outreach, my brothers and sisters. We need to have a global outreach. Notice what this says here. Vatican Radio. Pope Francis. It says, evangelize with a language of what? Merciful love. Then it says here, the church is called to evangelize at a time of what? What's the next two words? My brothers and sisters, have we seen great changes taking place in our world today? Does the Pope recognize this? Is, is he taking opportunity? Is he, is he taking advantage of it rather? Is he taking advantage of this? The church is called to evangelize at a time of great change. The Pontifical Council for the Promotion of New Evangelization is undertaking the preparation for the Jubilee of Mercy. And then it says here, another article, Pope opens Vatican Holy Door to start Holy Year. This is the door of the Lord, he says. Open to me the gates of justice, the pontiff said. For the first time, notice, the Pope instructed all 
cathedrals around the world to open their holy doors to pilgrims to encourage the faithful to mark the jubilee at home rather than do what? Do you see how he's making it very convenient for everybody, my brothers and sisters? For the first time, they know how to reach the world, my brothers and sisters. But did God give us the knowledge that is necessary for, this, for these last days to reach souls for him? But who is taking advantage of that, my brothers and sisters? The papacy is taking advantage of that. Notice also from Vatican Radio, it says, Pope Francis says, Jubilee reminds us that Jesus is what? Is that, is that true? But that's a double talk, my brothers and sisters. Then it says, the Pope said, make sure that no one asks you to pay for going through the, the door. Because you don't pay for what? And Jesus is for free. If Jesus is for free, then why do we have a conflict here? According to the Pope here, why do we see two churches, two women in Bible prophecy, Revelation 12 and Revelation 17? Which one of them shows that Jesus is for free? It's the church in Revelation 12. Which church persecuted God's people and so that salvation by, was by work? It's the church in Revelation ch chapter 17. But the Pope now is seducing the world, do, making his uh, global outreach as Time Magazine says here, it shows a, a graphic on how the papacy is reaching out to the world. Because like the article says, he knows that he has but a short time. Another article from Catholic News Service says, Pope Francis, 2015, family ecology, but mostly mercy. December 10th, 2015, at the Vatican and on how many continents? On five continents in 2015, Pope Francis continued to encourage and demonstrate a style of, what's the word? Evangelization that emphasizes walking with people, listening to them, and showing them what? God's mercy. Many are just flocking by the millions, my brothers and sisters. As you can see in this picture here, if you look d down towards the end here, these are Thousands of people in line trying to go through those uh, holy doors. That's December 10th, 2015. It says, people wait to walk through the holy door in St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican, December 9th. The day after the holy door, so-called holy door, was opened by Pope Francis to begin the Jubilee Year of Mercy. Look at this picture, my brothers and sisters. There's thousands and thousands of people down there. And look at this line. The line is down here, stretching all the way down and up to here. These, these folks now, they are looking for mercy. And God gave us a message of mercy in these last days. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 12, is a message of mercy. It's a message of God's love, God love towards humanity. Fear God, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, 6 and 7, and give Him glory. Fear God, my brothers and sisters, for the hour of His judgment is what? Come. This is the appeal in this last day. This is the appeal. For the hour of His judgment is come. What else happened after that? And worship Him that made heaven and the earth. And then it follows by saying that Babylon is fallen is fallen Babylon is fallen the righteousness of God Revelation 14 6 and 7 showing the love of God for humanity and then showing how we are being deceived the world is being, is being deceived again look at the massive it's a lot of people my brothers and sisters that's, that's a lot of souls who are looking for mercy who are looking for love but many of them are being deceived my brothers and sisters God needs you and I in these last days to reach out to these souls and not be afraid of uh, persecution. It's becoming illegal to talk about Jesus in these last days. Yes. Yes, my brothers and sisters. But this is the time we need to shine for Jesus the most. Notice what he says here. Rome reports. Pope Francis explains why confession and the holy door are key during the Jubilee. That's December 16, 2015. Walking through the, the holy door, he says. And going to what? 
to confession shows the, the what? The faith one has in what? And then it says what? It is a direct experience of what? My brothers and sisters, do you see how the world is being deceived? Do you see how the world is being made drunk? By the wine, by the teaching of Babylon, my brothers and sisters. Walking, you must walk through those doors, my brothers and sisters. To show faith in Jesus Christ, as he said. And also, it is a direct experience of mercy. But Jesus says, I am the door, the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but by me. But the Pope says to do what? You must go through His uh, holy door. And again, going back to what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here in, in testimony. It says here, page, uh, page 117, in the very time, what time, my brothers, my, my brothers and sisters? In the very time in which we live, the Lord has called His people and has given them a message. What message is that? To bear to the world. He has called them to do what? To expose the wickedness of the men of sin. But primarily, how do we expose the wickedness of the men of sin? Through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. When we, when we reflect the characteristics, when I reflect the characteristics of Jesus Christ, then we present the message that Babylon is fallen and showing the people that the, the Antichrist is none other than the papacy in Rome. Then my brothers and sisters, many of these souls we just saw in the pictures will come to know Jesus. Amen? They will come to know Jesus. But in the meanwhile, my brothers and sisters, we have a short time to finish this work. We have a window of opportunity. While you and I can come here, Sabbath after Sabbath, without anybody coming after us, when we can sit here and study the Word of God and talk about the papacy, which is becoming illegal. Did you know that? Even in the United States of America, it is classified under what they call hate speech. It is also classified under terrorism. And now, my brothers and sisters, they are using this group ISIS for all of these things so that they can make it illegal now not to talk about the papacy. Notice what this article says here. This is Christian Post World. It says, December 15, 2015. It says, New Islamic State video threatens, what's the next words? End of the world. Attack on who? Try to digest this for a minute. What have we been studying so far? We are looking at the two churches. We are looking at the church in the wilderness and uh, the, the church, the invisible church and the visible church. We, we saw, based on the pages of Scripture, that Babylon is none other than papacy. That's the one that persecuted God's people. We saw that the beast from Revelation 13, the first beast there, is Babylon, is the papacy. But this says here, new Islamic State video threatens end of the world. We're talking about the end of the world. Satan knows he has but a short time. And Babylon is fallen and fallen. And then it says, they put this together, what ISIS is doing here, because ISIS also believe in apocalyptic end time belief as well. So they said now, ISIS believe that if they conquer Rome, if they attack Rome and take over the papacy, then the end will come. That sounds like something that we've been preaching at Seventh-day Adventists. Notice what it says here. Rome is the site of the apocalypse, and the Islamic State militant suggests in the video that they must successfully defeat who? But how are we preaching this message? Are we, are we preaching this message in the, context, in the context that they're putting here, that we should go and... How should we conquer Rome? The Word of God. The Word of God, we just read, Wycliffe said the Word of God is a weapon against the papacy. Amen? Wycliffe said that through the me messages that we find in the Bible. Then it says, 
They must successfully defeat the Pope and the Christian religion to claim victory for their funda notice now, fundamentalist beliefs. Extremist Muslims believe they will have successfully taken over the world when uh, they de defeat what? The Pope in Rome. That is a smoke screen, my brothers and sisters. That is a smoke screen attacking the remnant, those of us who want to uphold the fundamental teachings that we find from the Bible. As a matter of fact, notice how th that is a smoke screen. It says here, medical kidnap. Christian family loses five children to CPS for, for what, what's the next two words? For radicalizing and what? Indoctrinating Christian with what? Children, children with what? With Christianity. Then it says, although the family wasn't quite sure at the time why their children were being taken away from them, their lawyer discovered that the parents were being charged with what? With Christian indoctrination. So if we are preaching now, if we are teaching our children, just like the Waldensians did, do you remember, my brothers and sisters, the spirit of prophecy that tells us that the, the parents taught the children the Bible and showed them that who the men of sin was and they taught them to abhor popery. So in these last days, if we are children teaching our children these Bible principles, so this says here that we are indoctrinating them. Then it says the lawyer obtained a copy of the government document that lists the charges against Marius and Ruth, which includes being what? Listed as what? Radical Christians who were indoctrinating their children. There was no proof of those parents doing anything wrong. The only thing they could accuse, accuse them of, teaching them Bible principles. So when they're saying that ISIS wants to conquer Rome and uh, destroy Rome and, and take the papacy ha uh, hostage, what are they saying, my brothers and sisters? Who believe that the papacy is the Antichrist? Seven-day Adventists, the remnant of her seed. This little group, and my brothers and sisters, it is not describing the regular line in this context. Go back with me now to Revelation chapter 12. And uh, as Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, you know this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make what? War with the Remnant of her seed, which has the two characteristics, the keep the commandments of God and has the testimony of uh, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a serious time. Amen? Do you believe that? Yes. We are living in a serious time. And the papacy is making rapid move to evangelize the world. Notice with me now to Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Notice what the Bible tells, uh, tells us here in Daniel chapter 12. There was a time coming. The Bible describes it as the great time of trouble. But we're going we're gonna to need the little time of trouble to finish the, the, the work. But before that, my brothers and sisters, before we get to the little time of trouble, do we have the freedom right now to worship God according to the dictate of our heart? Yes, yes we do. But notice Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. There's a time coming... When Michael shall stand, the Bible says, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be what? A time of trouble, such as what? Never was, since there was a nation even what? To that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be what? Delivered everyone that shall be what? Found written in the book. Now I'd like to, to skip over to verse 3 now. Notice what it says here. And they that be what? Wise shall do what? Shine as the brightness. And they that be what? Wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that what? Turn what? Many to righteousness as the what? As the stars forever. Who is that many there? Go, go with me now to the book of Job. What does that mean to turn many to righteousness. What does that mean? It says again in Daniel 12 verse, two, verse 3 that those who turn many to righteousness as the star 
forever and ever. The, Job chapter six, 16 rather. Notice what Job says in chapter 16, verse 21. The Pope is evangelizing the world and uh, making it illegal for you and I to practice Christianity, to even uh, teach our children the principles of God and to preach the three angels' messages. But remember, my brothers and sisters, before we read that, Job chapter 16, verse 21. Remember what the Bible tells, uh, tells us about Job. Was Job being afflicted, my brothers and sisters? Yes, he was being afflicted. Look at this in the context of Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. The, the saints will suffer affliction, will go through a tough time. And what Job went through, my brothers and sisters, he went through it because he did not want to deny God. He went through it with a lot of patience. Amen? He went through that, my brothers and sisters. And what Job went through, some of us will, will go through the same experience in these last days. Notice what Job says in uh, chapter 16, verse 21. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleaded for his neighbor. What was Job saying here, my brothers and sisters? What did Daniel 12, verse 3 tells us? Those that turn many to righteousness as the stars of heaven. But now Job says, All that one might plead for a man with God, as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. Was Job being marginalized by his uh, friends who came to visit him? But did he re retain his integrity, my brothers and sisters? Did he... Keep, kept, did he keep the faith? Yeah. Did he keep the faith? But what was his prayer? And you keep reading the, the rest of the chapters. Job even prayed for his friends. My brothers and sisters, we need to pray for those who persecute us. Yeah. We need to plead for God in behalf of others. This is the time that we're living in, my brothers and sisters. We need to pray. Last week, we started talking about prayer and fasting. And we need a lot of prayer, my brothers and sisters, and fasting. We need prayer to, to go out to evangelize the world at this moment. We need prayer to not, for God to pour His Spirit upon us and not to fear what men might do unto us. As the, the disciples needed this power after they fasted and praying, we are facing a, a world that is becoming more hostile each day towards Christianity. Today, it's illegal in some places to even talk about the papacy. Because when you do that, you are considered someone who, is, who belong to the group, the terrorist group, ISIS. Because they, so-called, have also an agenda to conquer Rome, my brothers and sisters. And they believe once they conquer Rome, the end will come. That's what they believe. The end will come. And what do we believe as Seventh-day Adventists? We believe that if we give the message, the three angels' messages to the world, Revelation 18, the angel there joined with the third angel, with power and glory, then God will bring about a reformation and a revival and reformation. Many souls will come to know Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Many souls will come to know that the papacy is the Antichrist. Amen. And what would happen next? Daniel just said it. At that time, Michael stands. When Michael stands, what happened? Probation closes. And many will see the papacy for, for who he is. So isn't, isn't that the reason why you see they're using ISIS as trying to use ISIS as a smokescreen for those of us who believe in that message, who believe uh, that we need to expose the men of sin. I'd like to uh, you, uh, take you now back to what, what is required of us, my brothers and sisters. Acts chapter, the book of Acts chapter 9. In this last, I'm going to show you a story of three individuals there, my brothers and sisters. Three individuals in the Bible we read in the book of Acts. And uh, one of them, the first one was Saul. Be, this was Paul there. 
but his, his name was Saul before he became Paul. You remember what he said in the book of Philippians chapter 3. We, we opened up and looked at that passage there. He described who he was in Christ Jesus and what he was doing. And what was he doing? What was one of the things that Saul was doing? He was persecuting God's people. He was persecuting the church. But he was doing it out of ignorance. We're going to look at three names here. Three stories. The stories of Saul and the stories of Aenas and the stories of Tabitha. As we're coming to a close here. In verse 1 of Acts chapter 9, it says, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. He went to where? High priest. My brothers and sisters, they are plots. This was a plot here that they were making against those who were preaching the message. Who, uh, what message was that? The gospel of Jesus Christ. They were plotting against this faithful few there. The world is plotting once again against the remnant of the seed of the church, of the early church. And then it says, verse 2, And desire of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way. What does that mean? This way. In the faith. In the faith. Th those who are teaching that Christ is the only way. To salvation, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, what, what are we studying? The, the two ways. The papacy says, you must go through what? To the Holy Ghost to find mercy and salvation. But what was the disciples teaching? What was the regular line teaching in those days? Similarly, the regular line was teaching that you must go through them. Unless you are circumcised. You cannot be, be, be saved. That's what the regular line was saying. And then they were plotting, verse 2 again, and desire of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. The same plot is being made today in these last days. Then the Bible tells us that Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute to arrest those Christians who were teaching the way. Remember that? The way. The only way. And who is our only way, my brothers and sisters? Jesus Christ. The way. The Bible says, but he met Jesus on the way. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters. He met who? He met Jesus on the way. There are those, my brothers and sisters, right now who do not know Jesus. Who are being deceived by the enemy. Who are being deceived by the papacy. And plotting against God's people. My brothers and sisters, we should pray for them. That God will open their eyes. And will knock them off their horses. And so that the, uh, their eyes can be opened again and see the light. And that's what Paul experienced. And then Paul experienced this. He became blind, the Bible tells us. Then uh, God sent him. Uh, sent Ananias to Damascus to see Paul. And Ananias opened the eyes of Paul. And Paul was not the same anymore. And then the Bible said, tells us here in verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Arise, that's to Paul, and go into where? What was the street again? Straight. straight. What was the street again? The way. The way. Now, who is the street represent here? Who is the way represent here? Christ. Who was he persecuting, my brothers and sisters? What did Christ say? You are persecuting me, Saul. Now, who is, he, who, who is God now sending out to take the message of Jesus Christ to the world? The one who was persecuting the way, the church. While we were yet, Christ died for us. We were enemies of God. Do you see yourself in, in Paul's shoes here? Where were you, my brothers and sisters? Did God knock you, off your, not knock you off your horse to show you the light? My brothers and sisters, after God did that, after Paul had that experience, 
What commission did God give him? What commission did, did, did Jesus give him? Notice again verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul, of Tarsus. For he, for behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named who? Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. But the Bible tells us Ananias didn't want to go because he knew about Saul. Amen? He knew what kind of man Saul was. But my brothers and sisters, thank God for the transformation of life. This is the, the person that Paul was. And this is a person that, that God is telling Ananias here. This is the person that he is now in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen? What kind of person were you before, my brothers and sisters? As I shared with you this morning, if it wasn't by God's grace and putting my wife on my, on my path to knock me uh, off my horse, I would not be here today. I remember who I was before I met my wife. I remember I know who I am now in Christ Jesus. And as Paul says, I have not arrived. I, I am still what? Pressing towards the mark to reach that perfection in Christ Jesus. Amen? So this is the person that he was that Christ said to Ananias, Don't worry. I'm going to show him something about the way. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto Ananias, Go thy way, for he is, that's all, for he is our, a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him that saw here. I will show Saul how great things he must what? Suffer for what? For my name's sake. So what Saul was doing to those who was following the way, he's about to experience that. And uh, my brothers and sisters, did he, did he experience that? Yes. But di did he follow his Lord and Savior? Yes. Was he transformed? Yes. Notice verse 19. And when he had received meat, that's Saul, or became Paul there, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he, do, he did what? He preached Christ in the synagogue that He is the Son of God. My brothers and sisters, I want you to think with me for a moment. Saul was who? He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. And the Pharisee were, were, were part of the regular line. And which one was part of the irregular, which group was part of the irregular line? The Christians. My brothers and sisters, after Paul got got knocked off his horse by Christ. And he became blind. And his eyes were open. Which movement did he go and follow? The irregular line. You're going to see the context of that as we come to Tabitha there. He followed the, regular, the irregular line. But notice now, verse 21, But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which call on this name, the name of Jesus, in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? Who are the chief priests? That's the regular line. That's the regular line. Who was supposed to know, that the, recognize the Messiah, and present the Messiah to the world. But they failed to do that. Instead, they turned against those who was taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. My brothers and sisters, where are we going to face temptation, for, uh, persecution first? From within, my brothers and sisters. From within. And where did Paul experience his first persecution? From within. From the regular line. There are many of us who are leaving the regular line and trying to make steps to join the irregular line. And I know some of you are already getting feedback from others who still remain in the regular line and telling you that you cannot do this because that's the way. No, my brothers and sisters, Saul, who became Paul here, 
did not go back to the regular. As a matter of fact, he tried to, but the regular line did not listen to him. My brothers and sisters, the context of what I'm sharing with you here is this. The work that needs to be done in these last days, the message that needs to be carried in these last days, the righteousness by faith of Jesus Christ, and showing the world who the man of sin is, the regular line have moved away from that. They have moved away from that. Because it's becoming unpopular to teach, to preach that the papacy is the Antichrist. It's becoming unpopular. And Paul had a conversion experience there. And he was not afraid to suffer martyrdom. And we just read that in Philippians chapter 3. For his Lord and Savior that he came to know for himself. Now let's look at another story here. Let's go now to verse 32. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints, which dwell at Leda. And then it says, And there he found a certain man named Aenas, which had kept his bed, how long? Eight years. And was, what's the word? Sick of the palsy. Context there. Jesus, Paul met Jesus, and uh, he had a life transformation, a conversion experience. What message did God give to, so, to Paul? The gospel. He gave them the gospel commission to give to the world. Now notice now, the next story that follows after that is the story of somebody, following with me now, of somebody who was sick. Context there. That person was sick. And Peter saw that individual. Was the gospel commission given to Peter as well? Yes. Peter saw that individual, verse 34, and Peter said unto him, notice, Ahinas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Context. What else was, was given, has been given unto us as Seventh-day Adventists? Along with the gospel message. The health message. So was, Paul was given what? The message to take to the world, to the Gentiles, to even to his own brethren. But the next story that follows, it's a story of the health message. Amen? Did God bless this movement with the health message? The church that is described in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, as the church that has the characteristics of the first church that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy where we get a lot of information about the health message to help prepare the world, which is also part of Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. The health message there. Notice what this says here. It says, the Lord desires His church to be what? A perfect, what kind of church? A perfect body, a perfect church. Not all arms, not all body without arms, but body and arms together. And every member working as part of the one great whole. As, notice now, as the right arm is connected with what? With the body, so the health reform and medical missionary work is connected with what? With the third angel's message. But remember last Sabbath, we looked at this, that those who try to transform their diet from uh, a meat-eating diet to a vegetarian diet, they are called radical. Even that message in these last days is becoming unpopular. Even the health message is becoming Unpopular, my, 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 my brothers and sisters. Then it says, And is to work efficiently as the right arm, that's the health message, needs to work efficiently as the right arm for the defense of the body of, of truth. That's part of the three angels' messages. So, so Paul was given a commission to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And the next story that we read is Peter who finds someone who cannot do anything for himself because that person was sick of palsy. The word uh, sick of palsy, or the expression sick of palsy means he was bedridden. It was, he was paralyzed. What's the context? 
That's an individual who cannot do anything for themselves. There are many today, my brothers and sisters, that we can only reach with, with the health message. If we show interest, if we show that we care about their needs and show them how, like our sister here just showed the health message with us this morning, if we show them that we care about their physical need and how we can help them with their diet and all of these things that they might be going through, they might be more receptive to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Now notice the next story with me here as we come to a close. It says, verse 35, And all that dwell at Leda and Saren saw him and turned what? To the, to the Lord. How did they turn to the Lord? What happened? What led others to... The health message, the healing that took place. My brothers and sisters, the health message was given to us. Not for us, so much for us to live longer, so that the people can see a difference in the way we look, in our appearance, and why we look so young even though we're 60, 50 years old. Why we look so young. Why we have so much energy. That's why the health message was given to us. To be a peculiar people so that others can come to know Jesus. Because it says here, And all that dwell at Leda and Sound saw him and turned to the Lord. The next story now, verse 36. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. What's another word for Dorcas here? A deaconess and what's another word? A deaconess supposed to have, or a deacon... Hospitality. Hospitality. Then it says, this woman was full of, what, what? She was full of what? Good works and alms deed which she did. What does a woman represent in the Bible? A woman represents a church. But it says here, Tabitha, a woman, was full of what? Good works and alms deed which she did. So what kind of church that God is sending to the world in these last days? A, a church that is full with good deeds. The gospel of Jesus Christ and the health message combined, my brothers and sisters. A church that is full with good deeds. And my brothers and sisters, notice the characteristics of Tabitha here. That's, she was full of good works and alms, de, uh, alms deeds, which she did. Verse 37, and it came to pass in those days that she was sick. And what happened to her? She died, whom when they had washed, and they laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all, what's the next few words? And all the who? The widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. A woman represent a church. Amen? A woman represent a church. And that church here, there, Tabitha, was full of good deeds. And, and, and what else? And alms deeds which she did. She had the... Uh, wouldn't you say she had the... Uh, some special gift that was given unto her. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 again. Let's go back there. The latter part of it, the characteristics of the remnant of her seed is what? They, have, they keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of, of prophecy. My brothers and sisters. When Tabitha died, what happened? The widows... What does a widow represent in the Bible again? The self-supported churches. The widows cried and mourned for Tabitha. Are you with me? The widows cried and mourned for Tabitha. What did God give to this end time church? Who did God raise as a prophet? The spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Ellen White, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, have you heard that Ellen White has been crucified? Yes. Not literally on the cross. Did you hear what happened at the GC session, my brothers and sisters? Yes. 
Did you hear what happened there? What happened at the GC session? They crucified her. But which group, my brothers and sisters? Which group that has been crying to revive her? The irregular line, my brothers and sisters. The widows are crying to Peter, are crying to God to revive Tabitha. To revive. Notice what she, it says here. Testimony to the church, volume 3, page 269. The straight testimony. What happened? Must revive. The straight testimony must be revived. And it will separate those from Israel with what? Who have ever been at war with the means that God has ordained to keep what? Corruptions out of the church. Tabitha must come back to life. The self-supported widows say, Spirit of prophecy must come back to life. Must be revived. They demoted her at the GC session, my brothers and sisters. Wrongs must be, must be called wrongs. Grievous sins must be called by the right name. That's t uh, testimony to the church, volume 3, page 300, uh, 324. Then she says, in page 269, the plain straight testimony must live where? In the church. Or the curse of God, what will happen? Will rest upon uh, His people. As what? As it did upon uh, ancient Israel because of their sins. The straight testimony must live in the church. Because that's what's going to cause a shaking, we were told. That's what the world needs. The Bible tells us that we, we need a prophet. And God had raised a prophet in this last day to help finish the work. We studied before that whenever God raises a prophet at the end of a time prophecy, it always followed by judgment. So we can look at the context here. Paul was commissioned to take the gospel to, to the world. Amen? He was commissioned to take the gospel to the world. Then uh, Peter saw a man who was sick of a palsy, who cannot do anything for himself. That's the health message there. And Peter healed that man. And we see the story of Tabitha, who died. Tabitha died, but the people remember who she was. The, but which group of people remember there? The, the widows. The widows. The characteristics of Tabitha. The characteristics of spirit of prophecy, my brothers and sisters. The health message and the gospel was given to us. And also, we saw the characteristics of Tabitha there. Verse 39 it says, And all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. What does the garment represent? Christ's righteousness. Christ's righteousness is what we need to uphold in these last days. And uh, this work is only going to be done through the irregular line, my brothers and sisters. It is through the irregular line. And notice verse 41. And uh, Peter, he, and he gave her his hand and lifted up, lifted her up. That's after Peter raised uh, Tabitha. And when he had called the saints and the uh, widows, presented her what? Alive. The message must go on, my brothers and sisters. Spirit of prophecy must be revived in these last days. The three angels' messages, the widows, the self-supported one, are the one God is raising in this last day. Will you join this movement, my brothers and sisters? Amen? Will you join this movement? I hope and pray, my brothers and sisters, you won't allow the fear of men to overcome you. Not just the threat that we're getting from the world, but also the threat we're getting from the regular line as well. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, O Lord. We thank you for the, uh, the faithful witnesses who have come before us, who have made sure that the next generation would have these truths that we are enjoying this morning, this afternoon. They made sure that the next generation will have this truth available to them. They sacrificed their lives for your cause. Even Saul, we just, who became Paul, we just 
read about. He sacrificed his, his life to know the Son of God for himself. Father, we, we are living in a very exciting times and we can see all the signs pointing to your return. And Father, you give us a commission to, to help make this happen in a much faster way. We were told that if your people were doing the work that they were supposed to do, you could have come a long time ago. And Father, we know without a shadow of a doubt that you are coming soon and you are waiting for us to reflect your character to the world and also to take the message to the world. The three angels' messages, while the world is making it impossible or making it illegal for us to carry this message, I pray for your people that you will give all of us the boldness, the courage to take the gospel of Jesus Christ, to live the life as well and not, not be afraid to identify ourselves as those who follow the way, the straight way, and you are the way, the truth, and the life. Forgive us, Father, when we fail you. Please be with each one. Encourage us as we continue to study your word. Strengthen us. I pray for those in a special way that have been harass, harassing, getting harassed by those who are warning them and making them feel like they're doing the wrong thing if they follow the irregular line. I pray for them in a special way that you will give them the courage to stand up for you in these last days. Help us as a people to remember the sick, to remember that there are those, Father, who are looking for, uh, for somebody who can teach them the right way of taking care of their bodies. You have given us also the health message, not just the gospel, but the health message as well to take to the world. Teach us, O oh Lord, as we want to do things in a, uh, in a way here that would take us back to the old way of taking care of the sick and helping them. Open the doors for us so that we can make an impact for you, for you in these last days. While we have this time here, while we can do that, it will require sacrifices on our behalf. But remind us that uh, heaven is cheap enough. Forgive us once again, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen.